Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Michael Meshi. I head information and technology at Triple OK Law. Today I'll be taking you through a use case of how to use game development and gaming principles to improve financial services applications. Uh, so just to kick right off, of course, there'll be a lot of discussion around games, so lots and lots of games, from the old games, which some of you can appreciate, uh, Minesweeper, Dangerous Dave, moving forward to more recent releases such as Cyberpunk, God of War, and Senua Sacrifice. Uh, just a bit more, just to make sure you're in the right mood, it's going to be a heavily, ref I'm going to heavily reference games. All right, so why games in particular? Games from the beginning of time have always been a means that as humans we've used to communicate to one another, to tell stories and to interact. And this, this is now, this constant growth of games has evolved over with time and with technology. And we have found games being leaps and bounds ahead of the use of technology uh, compared to other industries. So what we're going to look at particularly from the gaming industry is design by subtraction, accessibility, feedback loops, failure states, strong AI, and heads up displays. To start off with uh, design by subtraction, now this is a principle within gaming where, of course, we simply say less is more. Uh, in design by subtraction, the goal within game development is to ensure that the core aspect of the game, which is the emotion you're trying to invoke or the sort of connection you want between the player and the game, is at the core of the design. Uh, if you could see on your screen, we have several images. Uh, the first shows a, a player in a game where they're out in the desert and you can see there's a lot going on on the screen, a lot of information. Now, then on this should be now on your other hand side, you should see one where this information is packed into uh, the physics of the game, where you can see the health bar, you can see ammo and statistics being shown uh, as part of the player's body. Now this is designed by subtraction where you remove the clutter away from, from, the, from the screen and make, it, make the game more immersive. Now, design by subtraction being pushed into financial services would, uh, by default, include now the first two, the two, the two pictures at the top of financial services you'll see are two different mobile banking apps, and you'll see for both jury mobile money transfer, what you have is, you have a question of M-Pesa, I mean, sorry, Safaricom, Airtel, and Telcom. Now, uh, with design by subtraction, what this would mean is you would remove these three options, and you would let the system on the other end decide by means of prefix whether 0724 is Safaricom or 0733 is Airtel. So one, uh, of course, this reduces the your utilization of space. Space is no longer crowded on the application. Secondly, what it does from a cybersecurity standpoint, uh, it also saves you a lot of error message reporting and the risk of uh, buffer, buffer overflows, especially where the wrong, the wrong number is sent and you hadn't predicted for that, or maybe a new syntax, is, a new prefix is added and you've not updated your systems yet. So there's, al there's also that cybersecurity element to it. So ideally the design, once you've implemented design by subtraction, what you would see is just send money to self or other and the amount you wouldn't necessarily have to determine which network it is. And this goes as far as to other services within mobile applications, where we, if it's even doing remittance or uh, money transfer, if it's something which can be, that should be associated with the system, it should be. Again, during the development, you should remember that you're developing this for an end user whose goal is to have an experience that they would enjoy when they're transferring or making any transactions. The goal is not to make them feel like they work in a bank or in a financial service institution like yourself. They don't need to have all that information. A lot of the information can sit back with the, with the system. The next one is accessibility. Now accessibility, especially now during the pandemic where everyone is moving to a cashless system, digital transactions are very, digital means of payments are very important. 
uh, accessibility now becomes quite a challenge. The traditional model accessibility has been catered for by, for example, having ramps in buildings to allow for anyone who has any impairment of mobility. And now we're moving everything to digital. So of course now uh, the developers start have to start have to be conscious about exactly how these apps are built in terms for people who have any form of impairment, whether they have a sight impairment, uh, speech impairment, vision impairment. So how would they address this? Ideally, it's addressed under four, four key levels. You have the basic level, the intermediate level, the advanced, and what we call the full set. So the basic level basically would just be, for example, taking care of increasing the size of font. So allowing, allowing the users of your application to decide if the font should be bigger or smaller, if they have a vision issue. Allowing the app to either dictate what's on screen, if they have any also if they are visually impaired. Intermediate involves a bit of coding. Uh, of course, that would mean changing of the code significantly, whereby you could decide to create filters for colorblind. If people are colorblind, how would they be able to distinguish certain items if that's a necess it's a necessity for them? Uh, advanced basically means now you'd get a professional who would also guide you not only just in what features you'd put, but how the app should be designed for people who have multiple impairments. And then the full set basically encompasses using all three. So a quick show, uh, as you can see on the screen, what we have, uh, first of all, is a game where it's quite colorful. Then on the next screen, the colorblind uh, accessibility option is turned on. And now what you have is the ca some colors are still there, but you'll notice that now the colors have shapes in them. So now to, that will ab uh, allow the player to see uh, a connection or to see similarities between shapes, sizes, and etc. Uh, so far, I haven't come across any any application in the financial sector which has attempted to do anything on accessibility. Next, we have feedback loops. Now, feedback loops exist everywhere in the world, action, reaction. The question is now, what is the intent of that action and reaction and how, is it co how does it affect the experience of the use of this financial application or the game? Uh, for example, in particular, we have two types of feedback loops, which are the positive feedback loops and the negative feedback loops. Positive feedback loops are mostly reward systems which uh, in gaming tend to reward a player for doing well. And negative feedback loops tend, uh, tend to balance out the game so that there is no uh, huge gap between the best player and the worst player. So this within financial institutions, what you'd see within feedback loops uh, basically is if someone inputs the wrong pin, they, they receive the right message that it's a wrong pin. The communication they get during a tr successful transaction for example, they receive uh, a notification from the app, the transaction is successful. Is there a need to follow that app with uh, an SMS? Is that an overload of feedback that would confuse uh, the user to thinking, if I don't get, if I only get the app notification, does that mean without the SMS notification, I shouldn't trust the transaction has not gone through? So such questions whenever you're developing the feedback. Of course, even when you do show something such as wrong pin or request timed out, how does it look aesthetically? Is it shouting in the, in the user's face? Is it too subtle that they'd miss it? Just finding the balance where it's giving information as opposed to screaming danger. Uh, next, we have uh, failure states. Now, failure states is what happens when in gaming, when the player is not able to complete a certain task or complete a certain action within a given time or given parameters. Now we have multiple state. We have multiple types of failure states. We have the time, we have progress, resources, power, and everything. Now with time, it basically means you're given a, a thirty-second challenge uh, within, for example, a game such as Need for Speed, where you have to drive from point A to point B and beat a certain time. Failure to which the game restarts, restarts to the beginning or restarts to a certain checkpoint. Now, within financial services, this to be borrowed could be how long does the app stay inactive before it requests for a PIN to be input. So, for example, you log on to one of your banking apps or one of your other financial apps, you put in your PIN, you are looking at your account, you put your phone down. How long 
how long during that term of inactivity should you wait before um, the app then decides you have to start all the way from the beginning or alternatively how far back should the app go if you're busy making a transaction there are certain fields you have to fill uh, to fill in then something goes wrong and you press the back button does that mean you start from the very beginning or is there a, did it save part of that data and decide that will only take you three steps back for progress this is basically the same just how much progress do you want to undo for for that particular person if i was doing an account uh, if i was opening an account on a mobile app and i stopped today uh, tomorrow i come back to the app do I, will the app allow me to resume my previous application or will it allow, or will it tell me to start from the very beginning and start uploading files and filling in uh, KYC documentation? Next, you have resources. In gaming, resources basically means if, for example, you're playing a game such as Age of Empires, which is a world building game, you would lose resources such as wood, food, gold, stone would be taken away from you. So now in the case of the app, uh, how do you use this failure state? Do you reduce if, if you suspect uh, this could be used in multiple ways? For example, just by reducing the limits of someone's transactions. All of a sudden, someone's account is transacting 100 times today. Normally he does 20. At the 21st time, you could have an automated trigger to reduce uh, the limit. If the limit was 10,000 or you move the limit to a thousand until you do some form of verification. Uh, power within games means just dropping down the level. So in games, um, those who, uh, for those who play games, different games uh, have your players leveling up in terms of skill and abilities and probably even weapons that could, they could use. So in the event that something would go wrong uh, or you fail a certain uh, challenge or mission, the punishment would be to reduce your power. This is just to make it now harder for the next time next time when you try to play. Again, if uh, this is taken into the context of financial applications, what you would have is if, there's, if there is an abuse of the, of the resource, then do you, do you have you set a limit for, for example, someone is verified at being able to transact up to 500,000, then you realize the photo they sent you probably is not the actual photo. So now you reduce that to probably 100,000 until they do the proper KYC. So that is one, one other option. The other one, which is everything, uh, this, is a, this is where once you fail in a game, the game basically starts as if it's brand new. So this, of course, would be quite, quite difficult to implement for financial services and quite crazy. Could imagine you put, your, you, put a wrong, you put your wrong pin and you lose your whole account. So probably wouldn't advise putting that in financial services. Uh, next off, we have strong AI. Now, one of the key things the gaming industry has gotten right is its, 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 its use of AI. And it's one of the best places where AI is even tested upon. You've seen Google build uh, different forms of AI, Deep Blue and Deep Thought, all to compete uh, in chess games, AlphaGo to play uh, Go and the like. So, what games have done, especially with AI, and um, the two on the screen are probably what stand out as some of the best. Uh, there's a game called Fear, which is first encounter, assault, then recon, where the AI was built in such a way that there was no need to set a difficulty for the game. So is, if you played like a newbie, the game would adjust accordingly. And beyond that, the AI would notice how you're playing. So you'd play for 15 minutes, it would think you're just rushing through the game, it's not fun anymore. It would then start creating obstacles based off of how, you're in the, how you are playing yourself uniquely. So the, the AI, your AI enemies actually learn from how you're playing. So they realize you like to take headshots, they'll put on helmets. You like to, see, you like to go behind cover to, uh, to pick up your gun, I mean to go behind cover so that you can pick them off one by one. Uh, from a safe position, they'll destroy any point of cover or they'll trap them. The other game is um, Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, in this game, what they did with the AI is that they were able to collect, the AI was able to analyze data between how users play, and then it would recommend maps, it would recommend designs for weapons, and even new characters based off the data it could collect. 
the AI would be able to help the game developers improve on the game in future. So how this would appear within uh, a financial services app would be, the app would be intuitive to each individual user. It would be able to know that you are using this app mostly for deposits or for investing. So options such as withdraw, send money would, would not would disappear from your homepage and would be stored somewhere else. So the app becomes completely unique to yourself. Um, of course, all these games all look different, but there's all one thing they have in common. And it's, I guess, it's the old adage of if you ain't broke, don't fix it. So as you can see clearly, all these games have the same continue game, new game, load game, options, exit, sort of like a normal landing page. And the financial services have also taken the same route to also build sort of the same landing pages for all the applications. How this proceeds to go on is that there's now a standard which we all like, but that template then becomes a challenge. So as you can see in the next slide, we have two apps which this is their landing page and does not change. Then we have the app at the very corner which is asking you to edit your favorites. Now this may not be dynamic through, uh, it's not been enforced by an AI, it's mostly asking you to choose what do you want to use and that's what will appear on your, on your landing page. So hopefully as we move towards the future, we'll see more apps take up this dynamic approach in order to allow my, my experience with this app to be unique to me and to be sort of tailor-made for me and for someone else with the same app, that also works. Another thing, if I could just go back here in regards to a Rainbow Six Siege, which games should be able to, I mean, apps should be able to do, and it's probably something the financial service needs to solve, is when you have multiple people who need to make payments uh, for a single item. Now, in such a game such as Rainbow Siege, it's a multiplayer cooperative game. So you play four, to four people on the same team trying to achieve a common goal. So if the financial services app in this case would be if we all bank or, or we all use FinTech X or Bank Y, to do our payments without having dinner or it's lunch. When the bill comes uh, either through NFC or some Bluetooth or whatever other model that's there, we are able to, to split the bill. So from one user, he can assign ratios or percentages of the bill and everybody pays and it appears as a single credit to, to the restaurant owner. Uh, now I'd like to just share with you a few videos as we, I do a quick walkthrough. Uh, first off we have is video number... So this first video is a, a game called Besiege. And this is what happens when you get creative with a flat space and turn it into a 3D space. Just how you could improve on your user interfaces so that the all banking apps don't look like it's just skin they are changing. The next video that we have is one thing that's lacking is sort of like a, a guide to how to use an app. And in this game, Titanfall 2, what you have is you have a hologram showing you what you should be doing. Uh, this goes a long way into training uh, users and also helps, could also be used for financial inclusion purposes to help people realize this app is not just meant for transactions, you can use for saving, for investments, for growth, for setting goals that can be built into it. Lastly, the video that we have is a game that basically encompasses all these principles. And um, so just here, we just have aesthetics uh, as the game moves on. The game is Control, uh, game of the year for 2019. So you can see the principles of less is more, um, basically off of the colors and the buttons to interact where it was telling, where it was asking the player to open the door. It was quite, it was a small action bar, but very noticeable by design. The game also comes with a lot of ac accessibility features to allow for people who are colorblind and those who are deaf, I mean, those who have some other vision impairments to to be narrated for the game and to be told where they are in the game and what's going on around them.
you know, for them to play. Now, the last bit of this video, I'll just show you uh, what you call uh, the design by subtraction. Of course, the AI in this game, as it was also built similarly to the FIA AI, where there was no difficulty that was introduced. And all that happened was, if the game sees you're a good player, it offers you a challenge. If the game becomes too difficult for you, it avoids making it too frustrating for you to quit, but it sort of relaxes the difficulty. So at this stage, as you can see, the game, now this is all just cinematics, and the gameplay starts quite shortly from here. You'll see that there's little difference and there's little uh, information given on the screen to allow for that immersion between player and the game. So at this stage, all you have is your objective on one side and your health bar. Uh, the character Jesse is armed with one gun as opposed to multiple guns, but the gun changes form. As you'd seen earlier, it it's now has sort of an enclosed triangle. Before it had uh, sort of the triangle was turned inside out. Um, so this allows, the, this is doing less with more, having one object serve multiple purposes. Another, uh, th an the next part where we see feedback loops yeah, is coming up shortly. And so here you can see there was a yellow arrow that showed a certain direction. So this feed, this is a feedback loop to show damage. And you'll see it again just here. So this shows the, the direction of the damage or that's coming towards it. And of course, the health bar is reducing. So this is a feedback loop that, of course, shows you, that allows you to learn. You can also see the visual feedback loop of the screen turning red on defeat, and of course, the fail state, which of course in this particular game will just take you to the start of that particular level. So what I would like to encourage uh, future fintechs, the neo banks, and the banks which are trying to build a true digital experience is they need to spend some time uh, in the gaming space with game developers, and I think they'll truly build an app that's sticky and that's worth its experience. Thank you.